Hi, my name is Rishan, a solutions engineer here at Strapi. Here are a few things I'm going to share with you. A few details about customization with Strapi, what Strapi v4 brings you, a short demo, and then we can conclude. Strapi provides you with many ways to customize your application. In this talk, we're going to focus mainly on backend customizations. There's a few ways you can customize the backend of your application. Here's six of them. Strapi provides you with facilities such as hooks, controllers, routes, services, custom queries, and policies. Hooks are a way that your application can communicate with another application after a specific event has occurred. Controllers basically dictate the way your application interfaces with data. Routes are a way that your application are going to expose those controllers and those actions to the internet. Services are reusable pieces of code that you can store in your application so that you don't have to duplicate the same thing over and over across your code base. Custom queries allow you to step down close to the database and have full control over the way you manipulate and work with your data. And policies are a way for you to dictate the control flow of requests in and out of your application. What are some of the customizations that cost companies are making? A few of them are security customizations, performance, and scalability customizations. On the security side, companies are utilizing policies to dictate the control flow of requests based off of the data and the content types. We've also seen companies go as far as using software like Clam AV and integrating that with the media library to scan documents that are being uploaded onto the Strapi application. On the performance side, developers are able to cache all their network requests to improve the performance of their APIs. On the scalability side of things, you're able to offload the heavy lifting, use services such as CloudFront, S3, and SendGrid to send emails. That's just a brief overview of some of the customizations that companies are making. There's a large use case and some great stories of what companies are able to do with Strapi. What does V4 bring? There's a few things that V4 brings you with customization. You have a standardized API response for both REST and GraphQL. You have better overall performance, and you have a new filtering system that uses a standard similar to that of QS. And also, you're able to selectively populate your REST responses. You don't have to get back the whole object of data if you don't need to have all those fields. Also, you don't have to populate all those expensive relations all the time. In cases when you don't need them, you're free to leave them out. In this demo, I'm going to create an API request. What this API request is going to do is allow me to create two types of content types or two instances of the same data for these content types in one API request. This will save me from making a round trip and hitting two APIs and navigating the complex permissions around those. Let's create a custom API endpoint in Strapi v4. Here you can see my code editor. Inside my code editor, I have two files open. One is called restaurant and another one is called create public restaurant. I'll close these for now and just let you know how I got to this point. Inside your Strapi v4 application, you're going to have an SRC folder. And inside that you have the API folder and folders that directly link to what content types you have created in your project. In this case, I have one content type called restaurant. Let me show you what this looks like inside our Strapi admin. Here in the content type builder, you're able to see our content type restaurant, which has three fields, name, display email, and user. The user is a relation to the user's model inside the users and permissions plugin. Say I want restaurants to be able to log into this platform through a separate client application and edit their information. I need to have a way to identify them. And that's why I related them to the user. In this case, I want to be able to create an instance of a restaurant and an instance of a user all in one API request. Back in our source code, we're going to start first by creating our controller. So we're going to open our restaurant directory inside the API and SRC folders, open up the controllers directory, and open up restaurant.js. Inside here, I created an extra customization to the core controller by adding one more controller called create public restaurant. What create public restaurant does is it takes in a display email, auth email, and name from the request body that you pass when you're making a request to this endpoint, and it uses those to create a user and a restaurant. So we've pulled those pieces of information from the request body. We're going to create an instance of a user using the Strapi entity service. 
that allow you to customize your application in a powerful way. So we're going to pass that data in. We need to have a username and an email if we're going to create a user in Strapi, or at least with the users and permissions plugin. And also, I think it's a great practice to specify the provider that you're going to use to authenticate this user. In this case, we're just going to use username and password. So we're going to specify local. We're not going to specify a password because we want the user to be able to set that password or reset it on their own. After we've done that, we're going to create an instance of a restaurant using the name we pulled out from the request body, the user we just created, and also a display email. In this particular case, we don't really need to wait for this process to be done because they're not going to be able to log in immediately. They have to confirm themselves and they'll also have an email been sent to them to complete their process of registration. Also, we just happen to be pretty confident. So after all this has been successful, we're going to return a status message called true and also a message that says success. You'll notice that I stepped away from the conventional way of the REST API's response. We don't have a data key and the metadata key inside our return, in our returned object. You're allowed to step away from this convention and customize the application to your particular use case. That's what I did here. Afterwards, we need to expose this controller to the public. How do I do that? Using routes. Inside here, I created a new file called create public route. The restaurant.js file comes with your content type. Let's take a look and see what that shows us. This just tells Strapi to expose all the core routes that come with your content type. These routes are for operations that are common, like CRUD operations. But our operation is not necessarily a common CRUD operation. So to make this a more cleaner job, I created a new file called createPublicRestaurant.js. And inside there, I exported an object which has one key called routes, which is an array. A route object, in this case, has a method key, a path key, and a handler key. The handler tells you what controller inside what content type to use. In this case, we want to use the create public restaurant controller inside our restaurant content type. And this is our path. That's it. A few things to note though. This is a registration sort of type of uh, sort of API. In this case, it's very wise for you to integrate something like rate limiting. Strapi does allow you to do that by specifying a policy that rate limits this API. That way, external users and external requests don't abuse your API. That's just something to think about for the future. Let's go and take a look how this looks inside our application. Back here, we want to make sure that we are allowed to actually access this API. So we're going to go over to our settings, users and permissions plugin and roles, choose the role that you want to be able to access this API. In this case, I want it to be publicly available and we'll choose restaurant, which is our content type name. We're going to make sure that our create public restaurant API is enabled and we're going to double check our API route. Now we're going to open Postman and make a request to our API and make sure that everything works. Here in Postman, you can see that I've already populated my API URL. And also I've populated some dummy data inside our body. I'm going to change this. Let's just call it happy at strapi.io. And the same for this. And also we're going to call this best restaurant. I'll just zoom that in for you to be able to see. And now we can make the request. If you take a look down here, the status of the request is true, so it was successful. And also our message says success. If we head back to our application, go to our content manager and click on restaurant, you can see we have a restaurant named best restaurant. Our display email is happy at strapi.io. Our user is happy at strapi.io. That's it. So this has just been a brief description of what you're able to do with Strapi and the customizations that Strapi allows you to make. So Strapi is investing in a suite of dev tools to make building production-ready customizations and applications easier. Some of these things are the plugin API, error handling with more standard sort of error messages, and a faster query engine. In my workshop, I'm going to touch on more aspects of customizations within Strapi. We're going to dive a bit deeper into books, policies, services, and more. Thank you.